Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to our Erebus tutorial spotlight series. So today we're going to be talking about kind of miscellaneous things within the Erebus, lots of little things that can add to your ability to explore and your ability to do combat. We do have a lot to cover but we're going to try to fit it all into one episode. A lot of this stuff's pretty straightforward and I just want to give it kind of an honorable mention um, as we move through. Um, first up, we're going to talk quickly about Woodlouse, just so you're aware that this is a thing. If you encounter Woodlouse, which you may encounter them whenever you break rotten wood or something like that, they're going to try to run away. Um, they're not really aggressive creatures, um, but occasionally you'll come across these Woodlouse. And I just want to mention, you can right-click them, and they will become Woodlouse balls. And then you can take them wherever you want them to go, throw them back down, and it's going to resummon your Woodlouse. Um, not sure what application you may want to use that for, but I just wanted to mention that that, that, that is a feature. Um, so if you want Woodlouse Balls, you can make them, um, but they're still going to be terrified of you um, whenever you resummon them. So just a heads up on that. Um, and while we're talking about Woodlouse, if you kill them, you will get um, an item here called Whetstone Powder. Uh, this is used to create whetstones. Um, you can craft whetstones and occasionally you can actually find these in chest, sand, petrified wood, and umber stone to make them. And then you can upgrade them with eight whetstone powder around your whetstone. It's going to give you a sharpness level one. Then you can turn it into two, three, four, and five um, just by crafting it up. So um, really, really easy, honestly, to farm up whetstone powder. If you just go find a bunch of rotten wood, chop that down, you're going to get a lot of, a lot of wood louse. You are going to have to chase them down, which can be a challenge. Um, but a really easy way to get Shotness 5 uh, if you're after that enchantment uh, specifically. Also, I wanted to mention that the Erebus does feature a Paxel. Um, so if you want a multi-tool, you can get a Jade Paxel, which will allow you to chop wood and uh, mine stone and dirt and all that with one single tool. So just a heads up on that. Just wanted to give that kind of an honorable mention. Next up, let's continue talking about some of the equipment within the um, Erebus. Uh, first up, there is jump boots. Um, a lot of your kind of advanced equipment is going to be crafted with reinforced exoskeleton pieces, so just a heads up. Um, but you will notice that it does keep the armor toughness and the armor um, of the standard exoskeleton, which is pretty solid armor. So using some fly wings and elastic fibers, you can actually craft yourself some jump boots, which if you are wearing these, You'll notice that you can jump extremely high um, while wearing these, so um, pretty useful. Uh, next up, there are the sprint leggings, which can be crafted with your legs and bio velocity, which we talked about before. Um, and you can craft yourself some sprint leggings, and these can be upcrafted um, up to all the way to a tier 10. So, for example, if you have um, your tier one, then you can just do this again, and you're gonna get a tier two, and so on, all the way up to tier 10. And this is a pretty expensive craft, so maybe not something that you'll want to shoot for too early, but something to kind of work up towards. Um, and these, if you have the sprint tier ones, uh, you're gonna notice I run a little bit faster. If you have sprint tier tens, you're gonna notice that I run a substantial amount faster. Um, whenever I'm sprinting. Now your normal movement speed is going to be this like standard. It only applies when you sprint uh, with those leggings, which I quite like. A lot of speed boosts tend to just be super speed all the time. I kind of like having the ability to sort of have it on or off, you know, um, instead of it just on all the time. Now next up there are there is an upgrade for your helmet, um, but instead of actually crafting the reinforced helmet, you're just going to take the reinforced exoskeleton plates, craft that together with some compound goggles, um, which these, you can craft these with compound goggle lenses and exoskeleton plates. These are compound eyes. You're gonna find these off of a couple different bugs uh, whenever you kill them, and then a little bit of amber glass. Um, pretty easy to craft. By default, the goggles, aren't all that great on the armor toughness and armor, but upgrading them into the headpiece is gonna give you the three and three. And that's going to give you basically just night vision um, whenever you're wearing this, just constant. It doesn't take durability or anything like that. You're just gonna have constant night vision, 
which is excessively useful in the Erebus, especially when you have something like Hardcore Darkness, because, of course, there is no, um, no moon or anything like that. So it, it can be a pretty dark place. Um, I've had night vision on throughout this. You can see it's a lot dimmer um, with the default settings, but like I said, Hardcore Darkness or something like that, whenever it's applied, uh, the Erebus is a bit dark and a bit spooky. Now next up, there is the upgrade to the reinforced exoskeleton plate. Um, first up, there is the glider chest plate. So just taking some glider wings, you can make a glider chest plate. And if we throw this on, um, you will have a hotkey that you can set within your configs. Um, by default, it is G. And so if we jump off of this and hold G, you can see that the wings extend on this and we can slowly glide down. Um, with our glider chest plate. And if you release G, you're going to fall, so you do have to hold that. Uh, it's not a toggle system. Now next up, if you want to upgrade this even further, you can make the power glider chest plate. Um, and to make this, you're going to need enhanced glider wings, some elastic fiber, and velocity blocks, which are crafted like that. And we're going to talk a little bit more about velocity blocks, um, probably after the chest plate. We'll just go ahead and segue into that real quick and cover those. Um, but the way the glider chest plate works is it will still retain the glider feature. So you can hold G and we can glide. The wings extend, uh, which is great. But in addition, if you have red gem in your inventory, so if you have some red gem, if we hold H, we will uh, fly up. And it's going to look like that, which is kind of cool. Um, but just holding it, you're just going to fly up. There is no real hover, but you can kind of hover, sort of, um, just by tapping it and releasing it. So you can kind of hover with it, but it's more of exploration flight and not really like a creative mode flight uh, with that. And it will consume some red gem um, to allow you to do that. So just a heads up, but you can still use the gliding feature um, without needing any kind of red gem for that. Um, now, last up, as far as equipment, then we'll, we'll talk about the velocity blocks real quick. We have the water striders. These are another kind of upgrade to the exoskeleton boots, which uh, take water repellent, um, which take hydrofuge and repellent. Um, to craft that, hydrofuge, if you want that. Uh, repellent's pretty common. You're going to find that off of a couple different bugs. But uh, hydrofuge is a little bit more rare. Um, but if you want hydrofuge, go look for um, dragonflies and stuff kind of around the water areas, and you're going to get some hydrofuge. Also, the lily pad dungeons tend to have a bit of hydrofuge in it as well. And the water walking boats are going to do exactly what you might expect. Um, if we hop up, they're going to allow us to walk on the water. So that is what they do. And the nice thing about them is you'll notice that if I fall, they're not going to stop me right there. They're going to allow me to safely hit the water and not take fall damage. But you'll notice that now um, I'm able to walk around on the water. Basically you fall far enough to where you don't take fall damage and then you're able to walk. So so that pretty much covers kind of the upgraded armor. Um, there is some weapons and little tools and stuff like that we're going to talk about uh, in just a moment. Uh, now next up we have the velocity blocks. I just want to quickly mention these. You can place these down and you're, you're going to notice that the arrow faces the direction that you place them. So if I place them here, it's going to go there. Uh, and what's nice about these, they are a little bit expensive to craft. The lightning velocity takes velocity and a bit of supernatural velocity, whereas the velocity just take the bio velocity. Um, and if you stand on this, you'll notice that that's, that's without me running on it. Like if I don't hit anything, if I just jump on this hands off, it just moves me um, through that. Now, if we have instead the lightning velocity blocks and we jump up on these, zoom. And uh, just in case you've forgotten, if you want to get a bunch of this velocity, I say a bunch. It's, it's going to take a little bit of farming to do a whole lot with it, um, especially if you're wanting to use lightning velocity because it is a little bit more rare. But you're going to be hunting those solar fuges and centipedes. For this stuff um, but if you farm it up it may not take too long especially if you have fortune 
and if you have auto spawners um, you know you could have this set up to be auto farmed um, and have lots of bio and supernatural velocity so next up let's talk about a few different weapons and just kind of useful sort of combat gadgets that uh, you may get your hands on first up the wasp sword which of course has been the sword that I've been using kind of throughout this uh, um, this tutorial series is a very very strong weapon and uh, in addition to having a very high attack damage it does also carry a chance to poison enemies which of course is very very nice um, of course I've got it enchanted with Bane of Arthropods when you're here um, I'll probably I should probably go ahead and mention when you're here I do suggest that you have Bane of Arthropods weapons as opposed to sharpness weapons you're gonna deal a whole lot more damage uh, while you're here and aside from just the mushroom mobs all you're going to be coming across here at least as far as default Erebus is going to be bugs right arthropods so Bane of Arthropods is going to be your best friend you're going to deal a whole lot more damage with Bane of Arthropods 5 instead of Sharpness 5 so you've got a use for that Bane of Arthropods for sure um, so Wasp Sword, the way you're going to obtain this is, um, you know, we mentioned before about the kind of the wasp nests that spawn along the ceilings uh, in some areas. So if you go up inside of those, there's going to be a spawner, break that spawner and you have a chance to get your Wasp Sword. Um, so worth going after it, but of course wasps and stuff are a bit dangerous, so do come prepared, especially since you're going to be scaling up to the ceiling. To obtain uh, this sword so in addition there is a dagger and this is a craftable um, thing it's just a stick and a wasp stinger um, but it's a one-time use thrown weapon uh, so you're able to take these daggers and what we can do is then just right click them and we can chuck these uh, these daggers they don't do a ton of damage but they do poison mobs or have a chance to poison mobs and uh, yeah, see, there's there's a bit of repellent right there just from a cicada. There's actually a few different mobs that can drop that repellent, so uh, it's pretty common. But um, but yeah, you can throw these little daggers. They're just kind of useful and they're really cheap to craft, especially if you have a wasp uh, spawner or some way to auto spawn them. Uh, they are extremely cheap and do decent damage for something that you can just spam. Um, actually, being very effective against certain bosses because of the amount of spam damage that you can deal with these uh, if you don't mind crafting up a bunch of them. And they stack to 64. So, an alternative to ranged weapons. Um, I do kind of wish you could pick them back up after Throne, but that's okay. They're cheap enough to craft that it's not a big deal. Now, next up, we have the maximum speed bow. Occasionally you'll come across this in dungeon loot um, and this bow is kind of what you might expect It's an extremely fast firing bow So you can just hold right click and it will fire as fast as it possibly can and each of these arrow shots are going to be full power um, dealing maximum damage and um, Having maximum range so um, Worth noting this bow cannot be enchanted with infinity but uh, everything else is pretty much fair game. So maybe put mending on it uh, and carry a bunch of arrows. But uh, you're not going to be able to use infinity with this bow. Now next up we have the Horn of Beast Summoning. Um, this isn't really so much a battle item as it is uh, just kind of a useful item. But what you can do is you can hit right click with that. You're going to notice that it consumes. That's why I went into survival mode. You're going to notice it consumes the horn. But it summons a load of bees. Uh, this is useful because, I mean, these bees aren't really going to do too much as far as battling. But what's what makes this useful is if you're into, you know, honey, nectar, uh, one of those horns is going to summon about six, seven, eight, kind of random uh, bees to a location. And then, of course, from there you can tame those bees and have them working uh, your flowers and stuff like that. You can also take them into the overworld or other dimensions. Uh, that horn is not craftable, but it can, at least by default, uh, but it can be obtained from dungeon chests. So, just a heads up there. Uh, you may come across that and don't right click it and, and use it in the dungeon or anything. Now next up, let's talk about web slingers. Uh, the standard web slinger cannot be crafted by default, but you can find it in dungeon chests. The Wither Web Slinger is an upgraded version which does require some Wither Webs, Poison Glands, and Soul Sand, 
which you can pretty much get all this from Black Widows. Um, if it's enabled in your pack, you may come across Black Widows in the Nether. Otherwise, you can find them within the Erebus, um, you know, on occasion, kind of skulking around. Um, but what these things are good for is if you have uh, cobwebs, you can use these uh, with your web slinger and you can shoot webs out. Of course, you have to be kind of careful because you'll notice sometimes it catches that grass and sticks the web right in front of your face <laughs> and will slow you down. But this can be used for combat, of course, because mobs that get stuck inside these webs move just as slow as you do, uh, generally assuming they're not spiders. Um, and these will consume the cobwebs in your inventory. So if I go into survival mode, you're going to notice that it's going to start consuming the cobwebs that are in my inventory here. And it will take a little bit of durability damage. But it can be enchanted with like unbreaking and stuff uh, if you see fit. Now in addition, there is the, with the Wither Web Slinger, uh, which of course, like I said, is just upgraded through crafting. And the nice thing is it can use standard cobwebs. So you can see that I can shoot wither webs using regular cobwebs. And wither webs, of course, give wither as well as the slowness effect. Um, so really, really useful against mobs. Just once again, be careful. Don't get yourself caught in your own webs uh, because you'll end up killing yourself if you're not careful. Now, next up, we have the augmented scorpion pincer, which is crafted with scorpion pincers iron ingots and reinforced exoskeleton plates and this thing will shoot fire charges so if you want to shoot fire at mobs uh, you can do that with this so just shoot out fire and catch them on fire um, is what it's good for and it will require fire charges to be in your inventory so just a heads up on that uh, now next up we have the homing beacons there are two different types of these uh, first up the standard homing beacon can be crafted um, as you can see here and uh, if you right click a spot um, shift right click I'm sorry um, it will always show you on the compass how to get back there is what it's for um, so basically you can just mark a spot um, and that's really all there is to the standard homing beacon now in addition it will tell you your X and Z coordinates and your dimension uh, so that is kind of useful um, especially if you don't have a map or something like that. Now, on occasion, when you're in dungeons, I believe it only comes from the Antlion dungeon, um, if I recall correctly, but you may come across an advanced homing beacon. This thing is great because you can do the same thing, right? You can shift right click, set a spot, and it's going to show you how to get back there. But, and just to show you, I'm going to go into survival mode. If I right click, I warp back here. No XP cost, no durability cost. I have a permanently saved teleport for free. Just right click. Um, so very, very useful in that regard. And of course you can move it. So if I want to move it over here, shift right click there. And now I'm gonna teleport to here. So uh, can be useful for exploring, especially if you have two of them and you can kind of set one as home and set one as like where you have explored out to and then work back. Um, but like I said, they are kind of rare. Um, it may take you a while and a fair few uh, dungeons before you find one of these. So next up, let's talk about wands. First up, we have the Wand of Animation. If you ever played Project Ozone 2, or yeah, 2, um, this thing was notorious because you needed a ton of soul crystals, which meant you needed a ton of antlions. Uh, so it was a bit of a farm. But once you get this thing, um, it's quite useful because what you can do is pretty much any kind of block. I think there are a few exceptions, but most any kind of block, you can take the wand of animation, you can right click and you can create an animated version of that block. And what's nice is if you kill this, it's going to drop the block, um, which by itself, not all that useful. But if you have an auto spawner system, you can of course capture that uh, that mob and then start auto spawning it. So you could make something like a diamond block, um, turn that into a mob, capture it and start spawning it or something even like Awakened Draconium. Um, I know that was one of the big ones on uh, Project Ozone 2. Um, so you can kind of create living blocks 
with it. Now in addition to making just general blocks, there are a couple special things that you can make. If you use it on glowstone, you create a glowstone animated block which does emit light um, as it moves around. So if I take this off, you can see that's emitting a light source around it. Um, also, the same is true with jack-o'-lanterns. They're going to make a mobile light source that can kind of crawl around uh, <laughs> and emit light in an area. Um, you can also create a crafting table that runs around. And if you right click this, you can craft on this little mobile uh, crafting table. Uh, you can create a mobile chest. Um, and by the way, for the chest, of course, if you right click the chest or the crafting table, it's going to uh, open up those. Um, but what you have to do is just shift right click with the wand of animation to get them into the mobile version. Uh, so the chest here, chest or the chest, if you right click, you can see I can access that chest. So I have a mobile chest. And then lastly, there are bamboo crates, which we can turn these into another mobile, uh, basically chest, bamber, the bamboo crate. So um, kind of useful in that regard. You'll notice that they're going to follow me around and hang out with me so I can have my mobile chest following me around and my crafting table and we can go out and we can explore together. Now unfortunately you'll notice that the glowstone and the pumpkin do not follow you. So quite useful. Um, you know, if you're going out exploring, you need some uh, storage and stuff. Just bear in mind that those can die, and if they do, they're going to spew their items all into the world. Um, so, just be careful about that <laughs> when you're going dungeon di dungeon diving with your uh, uh, your mobile chests and stuff. Now, next up, let's talk about the wand of preservation. Um, for this, you're going to find this. I'm going to pop over to the jungle. I think I had some over here. Tends to be most common in the jungle. There we go. So right down here, you're going to notice that there is this right here. This is an amber clump. Um, can pretty much be found in any kind of biome, but generally you're going to find a lot of them within the, or not a lot, I say, I don't, not a lot of them, but you're going to find them probably more often in jungles and stuff like that. But you're going to notice whenever you find one of these amber clumps that occasionally you're going to see things inside of it. And it's going to be an amber preservation block. Um, so this one right here has a bug inside of it. And if we dig around inside this amber, we may find some additional uh, some additional things, some additional treasures. Uh, and this stuff, I would suggest that you mine it up, collect it, just go ahead and keep all of it that you can get your hands on. You can make amber glass, which is used, of course, for the goggles and for some of the fluid jars and things like that. Also, the honey liquefier is going to require it. Amber stars, which we're going to talk about here in just a moment. Glowing jars, fluid jars. Um, it's all around just very, very useful. Um, but, of course, you can also find lots of treasures down inside of here sometimes. And occasionally, it's not very common. It may take you forever to find one. But occasionally, you're going to find a wand that is trapped inside of some of this amber. That's gonna be the wand of preservation. Just like that little bug was trapped inside that bit of amber, you may find the wand of preservation within one of these amber blocks. But it is very rare, and amber is very rare, you know. So, it might take a while. But once you find some, what you can do is you can craft some of those amber stars and to make these, you are also going to need some tree resin, uh, which is also used to make varnished planks. Uh, varnished planks are kind of useful or kind of important because you're going to use those to make specifically to make like silo tanks, silo roof, fluid jars, uh, and they do require a little bit to craft, as you can see. But these are common bug drops, and tree resin is actually very easy to get. Um, so to get your tree resin, um, what you're going to do is you're going to look for balsam. There we go. There's a balsam tree. Um, not the most common thing, but whenever you break these trees, you have a chance to get some tree resin from that, and then you're going to use that to make your amber stars. So getting a balsam tree farm up and going, not a bad idea. Um, but once you get that, you can make your amber stars, and then you can use your wand of preservation. 
pretty self-explanatory to use because Erebus is really nice because it gives you text. But what you can do is you can then right click this and it's going to shoot out amber and you can capture mobs with this. Um, and then what you can do is you can use a silk touch pick, you can break it, then you can take that mob with you wherever you want it to go. So if you want to take your beetles back to the overworld, you can do that with the wand of preservation. If you want to take a, uh, uh, like a fly, whoops, there we go. Ah, ah. These are kind of hard to hit. There we go. If you want to take a fly with you to the overworld, you can do it. If you want to take a uh, scorpion, there you go. You got one. Um, just use a silk touch pick. If you're not using a silk touch pick, it's going to break the amber preservation block and it's going to spawn the mob. So once you get to the overworld with your, say, scorpion, you know, you break it here with your, with a silk touch pick, take it back to the overworld, set the preservation block back down, and then break it with a non-silk touch pick and you're going to spawn your mob. Uh, now if you do happen to miss when you're shooting this, it's just going to make amber, which of course then you can mine. Um, you'll need more tree resin, but then you can just make it back into uh, amber stars if you so desire. And what's really, really nice about this, uh, the Wand of Preservation, is it's going to save all the mob uh, details. So if the mob is damaged, if it's name tagged, if there's any special things about it, it is going to save that within the uh, Amber Preservation block. All right, I tell you what, we're going to split this off into two parts because there really is just a lot of features within the Erebus to talk about. So we're going to be splitting this off into a part one and a part two. Um, so we're going to end out part one here and we'll pick back up and finish off in part two. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. Stay updated with when new videos come out and uh, I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.